Hello and welcome to the second uh, episode in the Gorok Beginner's Campaign Guide. Um, this is going to be a campaign where I'm going to explain things in depth as I go. Uh, pretty detailed, so it's going to be slow for anybody who is familiar with the game. Uh, last episode had us going over the basics. Very basics of you know, all the buttons, uh, very basics of fighting a battle, um, and the basics of settlements and leveling up characters. This episode's going to be shorter, uh, but it's also going to move faster because I'm going to just to kind of explain things as I need to explain them. So, uh, we are now going to look to take the city of Axlotl. Um, after we do that, we'll be able to end our turn and go to turn two. Um, we definitely have enough troops because we damaged the garrison inside. Um, or killed them all, I can't remember what we did. But let's go check it out. So, um, since we fought kind of a beginner battle, uh, and we kind of know how this is, this is going to be our first time we auto-resolve, um, just kind of show what it does. So, if you hit it, since the balance of power is super hard in our favor, uh, we hit it, and it will like do the math, tell us how many we lost, 19, um, and uh, they all died. Now, so obviously, th that was a type of battle that you would auto-resolve, um, and uh, if you just wanted to save some time. But you can always go in and fight it, and then we wouldn't have lost 19 troops, uh, because we could play around and not actually throw our troops away. But when the auto-resolve happens, it will calculate stuff uh, and just decide 19 guys died. So, you also might have noticed the visual bug that came up. said I leveled up to level 627. It's not actually that level. It's just a visual bug. So anytime you get to a settlement, you have some options. They'll show you if it's a suitable climate for you, which this is. Um, and you have the option to occupy, loot and occupy, sack, or raise. Um, and uh, what they do is raising will just burn it to the ground. Sack um, is you basically go in and raid, pillage, right? And it'll help you heal. You'll get some money, uh, give some public order problems. You could decide to sack and then occupy it, which gives you uh, generally less money and less rep uh, and more public order problems that you're going to have to deal with. And occupy, you just have some public order problems, small ones, and uh, you just take it. We're going to take it because we need to complete our province. Uh, generally, uh, there is some strategy to looting and occupying because um, sometimes you may want to bring a rebellion about quicker. Uh, it's a way to help level up your hero. I'm not going to do too much of that in this campaign, even though it's a decently good strategy. Uh, the reason being is it's just, it's just a beginner's campaign guide, and uh, um, I'm not going to be going over certain strats like that. All right, so we're just going to occupy it. So we did gain a weapon from that. Um, this weapon gives bonus versus infantry, uh, which means that they are stronger versus infantry. Uh, minus six enemy leadership for Skaven units in the local region. Uh, so any enemy armies in the local province will have that when they're fighting against this army or the other, any other armies in our province, uh, I'm pretty sure. And uh, enables magical attacks. It's not a bad weapon. Um, we probably aren't gonna, going to equip it on Gorok because he has his weapon. And uh, Lord Croak actually has a bunch of unique items, so he's all kitted out just from the get-go. Um, so we will probably put that on someone later. So we can uh, go to our overview and decide to build. It's a level one settlement. Um, this will give us some timber to trade. We aren't doing much trading right now, so instead what we're going to do is we're going to focus on growth since we didn't focus on growth um, over here. We were going for the gold mining pits. We're going to go for growth here. That way we can uh, grow up the settlement. Um, we also have a level up on both Lord Croak and Gorok. So Lord Croak will uh, we're going to just level up his spells. It's a, it means that his spells will cost less magic and we can do it more often. It's an easy way to level him up first. This is uh, the, the smallest one, medium one, biggest one. All right, so that's fine. Um, oh, I guess I should show you a little bit more about Lord Croak's tree. It's, he's got a unique tree as a hero. Um, he's got a very interesting blue line that involves some uh, utility skills that he can uh, basically when he's out on his own away from the army he can like just destroy walls by himself um, these are his spell upgrades uh, this also deals with spell upgrades 
this is a line that all uh, other slon have, other other big toads have. Gives them like regeneration and it allows them to cause terror and uh, some physical resistance and magic resistance. This just gives them like more winds of magic, um, which means he can cast more spells. This upgrades his shield, the big dome that we had in that fight. And uh, yeah, there's a couple other unique things up here. I'll explain it as I pick them as well. So uh, Gorok, we also have to level up. And since my mod gives more front-loaded skill points. So what we're going to go for is uh, we're going to go down the red line just um, to start. Because this, as we level it up, will give plus four melee attack for Soros units, then plus six melee attack, and plus three armor for Soros units, and uh, then plus eight and plus six. And it's going to be for Soros units, which are the basic infantry unit, and for lizardmen in the Lord's army. So just our army, but right now, if you take a look, we have four in the army, and we're probably going to have a decent amount even to the late game. This is not going, I'm not going to be getting rid of Soros. I would say in Gorok's army, I'll probably just keep it as source. I'm probably not going to switch to any other infantry, so that'll still be like his basic infantry that I'm going to keep in there, his front line. Um, sometimes some people don't go for this because they're going to replace source with temple guardians later, and those are buffed in a different path right here. Um, temple guards have better armor piercing damage, so they're better against uh, like heavily armored enemies like dwarves or chaos. Um, so that is, so sometimes people will go for that. I'm just going to keep Soros in his army, and since this gives us three points, we're just going to level it up all the way. We are now ready to end our turn. Um, so for this first end turn, I'm just going to show you how, uh, one of the biggest complaints about the game are the end turn times. Uh, there's a lot of factions, a lot of things the computer has to calculate. Um, so it does take uh, a little bit of time. That being said, I'm if I decide I've if I have something to say during the end turn, um, I will probably keep it. Um, if I don't really have anything of value to say, I might just cut the end turn times out of the video so you don't have to sit through them. Um, that being said, they're not really that bad. Um, so you can see right now we're going through all this minor Skaven factions, and the minor Tomb Kings factions, and the minor human factions, you know, we just, it just goes through like that. There's just a bunch of factions, especially at the beginning of the game. Um, and uh, the one thing I, one quality of life thing I hope they put in in the future is the ability to kind of like look around the map. I can't move. Um, you can, however, go to your, uh, where is it, your lords right here. And you can actually go to their level up screen while the end turn is happening in the background and you can like look over stuff. So I may do that in the end turn just to like show you different, um, talk about different skill trees and things like that. Um, so that's one thing you can do. All right, so that was the uh, first end turn. We have research available. Um, so one thing about the Lizardman's research tree is that there are gonna be some buildings that we build that will have um, a little symbol like this right here. It says unlocks technologies. We built one building that unlocked technologies last turn, which was uh, the Skink Forging Camp, the one that gives growth. It unlocks technologies, tablet of spawning. Um, so if we did not build that, we wouldn't have been able to research anything right now because the lizardmen have to build buildings to research, essentially. Um, some factions are like that, some factions aren't. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the research tree. And the only thing we can research, because I have to build the buildings to get access to it. See, we need buildings required to start these whole lines. Um, and how, this, how the Lizardman tree works is you, when you build a building for on this left side, you can take it to here. But, you all, but in order to continue, you need to basically build the building over here to unlock one of these to continue down this line. And then you have to build a building here to unlock one of these to finish the... Um, uh, row columns or vertical yeah so row so right now we're going to get a recruitment cost minus five percent for skink and chameleon skink units we can't even produce those yet but you know it's there um nothing wrong with it and it takes going to take four turns to do um we could also since we have unlocked this path we can click the furthest one or, or like some other place in the middle if we want to just have it research a chain for us, you know, like this, then this, then this. We aren't going to do that 
but that is something you can do if you if you want to be more I guess efficient about it. Um, all right. Uh, why does it say we have research available still? Didn't I do that? I did that. I don't know why it says that. All right. So we are going to have to take Subatun to unite the province. The thing about this province, though, it's far away. Like, this settlement's far away from the other two, and moving through the jungle is actually kind of rough if you're not staying on the roads. There are roads here that you travel through, but it, it can cost a lot of movement to move through the jungle. So we are going to... We're going to make our way over there. The uh, last episode, Bok Bok the Experimenter, was the lord that we killed who was over in this area. He does work for the legendary lord Skrulk. I think his name's Skrulk. Well, let's go see. Uh, Clan Pestilence. They're the guys who do plagues. Yeah, Lord so Skrulk. He, he looks like a naked mole rat. He's not happy with us. Um, yeah, he's the, he's the faction we start at war with. Um, yeah, he works for him, and they're down in this area, which means they're probably going to be sending troops over here and also up here. Because uh, pretty much... They could go up to the Dark Elves right here, which I don't think they're going to do, and they could go to the Dwarves, which I don't think they're going to do, because they're not at war with them. They're at war with us and a different minor Skaven faction. So we do have to prepare for his troops coming up. So I am going to move further down to try to uh, block him, um, or at least you know provide some resistance. I am going to move basically to the end of my movement, and I don't see anybody here. I'm going to recruit. You can recruit even after you move. Uh, right now we don't have any source with shields, but we do have source without shields, which is fine. Um, we'll replace them later. So we're going to be recruiting three. You'll notice that we can only recruit three, um, and uh, that can be improved later through things like maybe buildings or technology, stuff like that, or maybe even uh, Lord skills can, can allow you to recruit more. You'll notice it says local and global. Local recruitment is out of the province, the buildings in the province. So whatever you can recruit from the province, whatever buildings you have there, that's what you can recruit. Global isn't gonna come into play for a bit, but when I, uh, but essentially you can recruit from anywhere on the map. It just is very expensive, takes longer, and you can only do it while you're garrisoned or in the encampment stance. That's when you, you know, build camp. All right, it keeps on saying research is available. I don't know why it says that. So I'm just gonna skip that notification for now. Uh, Cause I'm definitely researching. Oh no, I wasn't. <laughs> because I canceled it earlier. See, so, you no. Know, game knew better than I did. All right, so as you can see, this is a very easy turn. I just moved, recruited. I'm gonna uh, probably do some um, diplomacy right now. So ten and one is to our north, or to Hena to Henaween. He might trade with us. So let's go ahead and see if he will. We don't have anything that we're trading, so it's just going to be us, you know, taxing our civilians. <laughs> he doesn't want to do it yet, which is fine. Um, we don't want to trade with the dark elves. They probably won't want to. They don't like us. The dwarves we could trade with. And military access. So what this is, is it removes the diplomatic penalty for trespassing on another faction's territory. Um, basically, without military access, if you walk on somebody's land, they won't like it. But if you have military access, they won't care. And same thing with you. Um, it means they'll just kind of go through your land as well. Um, it doesn't mean you're military allies. It just means you're letting each other cross your lands. Uh, trade agreement he wants as well, kind of. You can see there's like colors, so like green, and that one was yellow. Green, he wants it more, right? Um, I do not want to fight the dwarves right now. I don't know if I want to give him military access, because I, I will want to fight them eventually, I'm pretty sure. So let's just get the trade agreement, get that little extra income. Um, and uh, yeah, looking at the diplomacy screen before you end your turn is not a bad idea. That's going to be it for now. There's really not much else to do for us. Um, so let's go ahead and end our turn. So, uh, I may as well take advantage of these to look at, um, let's see, uh, look at the yellow line, I guess. Uh, so, this will upgrade his weapon strength, and it upgrades it more when he's fighting against certain enemies, because Lizardmen have certain enemies they don't like. Thick Skin adds more armor to him, 7 and 15. Blademaster adds more melee attacks, 6 and 12. 
Indomitable adds more leadership, uh, 6 and 12. One of the things that um, Gorok uh, can get, one of his skills, let me see if I can find it. Ah, right here. Unflinching makes him unbreakable, and that means that he will never run away. So you might be wondering, what's the use of adding to his leadership? And unless I'm not mistaken, which I don't think I am, um, adding to his leadership will add to his leadership uh, bonus, I'm pretty sure. But like uh, like keeping um, other troops in the fight. But that's something I maybe want to look up, because I don't know for sure. Um, oh, there we go. So we're going to kind of inch forward a bit. You may, you'll may you see down here, um, there's a yellow line cutting through um, that shows basically this is the border of our territory. So if we were to go here, we wouldn't be able to recruit at the end of our turn, turn because uh, you know, we wouldn't be able to recruit at the end of our turn because we wouldn't be in our territory. Uh, so let's just inch down here. We don't see the rats here. I'm trying to decide if we do want to just recruit right now, since we can't make it anyways. I think we will. So I'm not going to move the full length that I can move, so that way I can recruit more. I'm not recruiting the spears. I'm recruiting the clubs. The reason why is that the clubs um, are, they have a higher, well, let's, let's see the differences. So we're going to pin... This right here will pin a unit's stats on the side, so even if you uh, stop hovering them, you can go and look at their stats. And then if you hover over a different unit, it will show you the differences. So we see minus five melee attack for Soar Spears, it means that Soar Spears are not going to be hitting as often um, when they are in a fight. But they do have plus four melee defense, so they will be tankier. Uh, their weapon strength is also minus 10, and their charge bonus is also minus six. You mean like, wow, uh, spears are definitely not as good as Saurus. I mean, they're tra they're getting plus four melee attack, but they're losing all that other stuff. Um, the, but there's another difference at play here, which is if I take this way, see predatory instincts um, and pr uh, predatory senses, sorry, and primal instincts. Um, those are their traits they have. Whereas this. Now they get anti-large and charge defense against large uh, against large foes. They are better at taking down like cavalry because they're spears. So Skaven right now are not going to have a lot of large units. Uh, they do have some um, later in the game, but right now they're going to have small infantry. So we're just going to continue recruiting clubs or whatever they're called, mace. I don't know. And. Um, there's really nothing to do over here. I don't think there's any diplomacy we need to do, so we'll just end our turn again. Let's continue looking at the uh, yellow line. Oh, we have diplomacy. So maybe he's going to give us a trade agreement? Yes, and he's going to offer 200 to do it. So that seems like we just take that. Now, you can always counter offer if you're like, well, I want to get more out of him, right? You think he'll pay more than 200 or something like that. You want to add to the agreement or take away something. Um, so I'm just going to hit the button just to show you. So I'll, if I hit counter offer, I can exit things out. I could click on at something and like change the amount. Um, and it'll tell me like the likelihood of success. I'm actually not going to change anything, but that I just wanted to show you how that button worked. Um, and so I'll just propose it back to him, the same offer. He accepted it. He accepted his own offer. All right. Uh, where was I? Oh. So in the yellow line, once we get to Foe Seeker, that's an active ability. You can only get it after spending four points in the previous group, and you'll see there's a little box around here that shows that these are grouped. Um, and uh, it is a self-buff, 60-second cooldown, lasts for 25 seconds, gives 24% speed, which is going to be actually pretty important for him because he can't catch up to a lot of people. He's very slow. Um, and 18% vigor, which uh, is going to be important until... We get, um, there isn't something else that he gets somewhere. I think he gets it. Ah, right here. He gets perfect vigor uh, if you get this skill, uh, which means he'll never tire. He just always fights at peak efficiency. So that becomes less useful, the vigor part of it, once you get that. This doesn't unlock for uh, a bit of time, though. All right, so we're back to here. Axlotl. 
So our settlement uh, has leveled up, so we have a lot more options to do. Uh, one thing I'm going to talk about right now is how growth works. Um, so, well, not growth, how population surplus works, which uh, comes from growth. So you can notice that we can upgrade this settlement because it costs one population surplus to upgrade it to settlement level two. And you might be like, well, yeah, it's, it's no brainer. Just knew that do that. While I am probably going to do it, uh, there is a downside, uh, which is they the province shares population growth. Uh, that being said, the more settlements you have, the faster you're going to grow because these settlements even add to growth, right? So just me taking the settlement added 10 growth. So it's still, it's still important to take the settlements unite the province. That's like generally always going to be a good thing. Um, but we need two population surplus to get this to building level three, which we may want to wait for. Um, Axlotl is uh, not going to be we're not going to be like focusing on defending it, uh, whereas our capital, we definitely are. So I'm considering not upgrading at the moment and instead just trying to get my capital uh, as high as it can be. Um, so we also, you can see our public order change is minus five a turn. Um, so there will be a rebellion if, you know, that doesn't change down the line, but I think I'm okay with that. So let's go ahead and upgrade to the second tier of the gold mine, which gives us some extra uh, bonuses, a 1% tax rate, faction ride, an upkeep of minus one for all units, all armies. Uh, the income goes up by uh, 150, and it gives us some extra recruit rank on some of our units that we can't build right now anyways, and uh, some extra recruitment costs. And it also produces more, more chests of golden idols. So that means when you make a trade agreement, since we already have two, we're going to get more for our trade agreement, which is nice. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, and we will uh, just focus on that, I think, because we don't have a ton of gold. Actually, let's see if we can build one more thing. I don't really feel like I need to build any other military buildings right now. Can't build any of those. Can't build any of those. I could go for even more growth um, and just basically demolish uh, these growth buildings when the province is leveled up. Or I can go for some more money. Uh, I'm going to probably, ooh, I'm going to go for the money, I think. So, uh, it costs 750, it makes 180 a turn, so it's not going to take too many turns for it to pay for itself. Um, when you upgrade, obviously, it, it, it gets, uh, higher income, but it also costs more, so... Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go for that right now. It's probably a building I'm not going to keep in the capital forever. I'm just going to like let it have its have its fun in the early game. Give me what I need, and uh, and then I'll demolish it later when I need to make room for something else. We are now going to go to Subatun. You'll notice instead of attacking, it has this little chest because there's ruins here, right? We just see ruins. Um, now, generally what this means is that, oh, no one's here. No one's home, right? It's just ruins. Uh, and if you click on it, uh, when you get to it, it'll be like you can you can search the ruins, try to find something valuable by solving a puzzle, which uh, sometimes are insanely hard. Um, or you can just colonize it, which would uh, deplete your army and also cost some gold. Uh, a lot of your troops will be like hurt because they're like joining a society. They're like starting the colony, right? And so uh, there's a downside to that, and it might take a while for you to heal back up. Um, but we are fighting against Skaven, and Skaven are filthy, dirty rats who don't build cities. They, like, live underground, so, like, they'll live below ruins. Um, and so when they take a city, it just looks like ruins to us. We don't really get to... We don't know if Skaven are home. There's probably Skaven here. So we just got to keep that in mind. But we do have a decently sized army, so we're going to move in. Oh, they are not here. However, I don't have the gold. So what I could do is I could search the ruins to show a puzzle, which I may do that just to show it how they're like. But it will be wasting a turn of not colonizing. Um, but the other thing I could do is I could hit do nothing. Since I have some movement left, I could hit do nothing, go back, cancel some of my buildings to get enough gold to colonize. However... Colonizing does leave my army weaker, and I want to make sure if they're sending somebody here that I am ready, right? So I am actually going to search the ruins. It does give some XP. It'll give a puzzle. 
Hopefully it's not one of the hard puzzles, because if it is, I'm pretty much guessing. Um, so let's do it. Okay, it's not one of the crazy hard ones. So uh, this, I think, paragraph pretty much stays the same no matter what puzzle you do. Uh, this will give you a hint. To access the treasure, solve the puzzle, solitude is always desired. What this is meaning is that you're looking for uh, something that doesn't repeat. So like uh, this symbol right here, and this symbol right here are the same symbol. So even though they're different colors, um, they don't repeat, right? This symbol, this symbol repeats. Um, apologies if I am not understanding how this puzzle works, but this I've always done these puzzles and they seem to be fine for me. These, these repeat, but this symbol does not repeat at all. Um, and like this one repeats, uh, yes, this one repeats, this one repeats, this one repeats. This is the only one that doesn't repeat. So you click that and you succeeded. Uh, we get a thousand gold extra, and we also got a. Uh, ooh, that's actually kind of a cool little item. Doesn't give any stats or anything, but it gives the attribute of Vanguard deployment, which is uh, something I talked about in the last episode, where you can deploy closer to the enemy or even behind them in certain circumstances. Um, so that's something we could put on a lord later or a hero, you know, somebody maybe that we're going to save to go after some artillery in the back. We could hide them in the trees and then have them run out. Um, so yeah, that's something to keep in mind. Um, so we got that. Now, since we got some extra gold, let's actually build the growth building as well, I would say. Unless I want to save up for the shields, which may not be a bad investment. Two turns for that. No, I'm going to go for the growth right away. It's only 500. So we'll still have 800 in the bank. And that's that's the end of this turn. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be keeping these episodes a little bit short. I got a timer here to kind of keep track of uh, we'll probably do uh, maybe one more turn and we'll end this episode so we'll go ahead and end turn uh, and let's go back to the uh, Lord skills just so I can continue showing you you know kind of what they do uh, so we did foe seeker last time wound maker just ups our weapon strength by 10 and 20 percent and you can uh, when you're leveling up, you can always see the actual effect it'll have on your stats on uh, over here on the side. So you don't have to like do any math. It'll show you. Uh, I don't think it'll show us now because it's the end turn. All right, kind of does, or at least in some cases, I think. Anyway, um, so yeah, this is uh, gives you more hit points, 7% and 15%. Uh, this gives you more melee defense, which... Oh, no, that was uh, armor earlier. So melee defense, chance of not getting hit. Uh, this gives you more speed, which is, yeah, that's, I'm going to be getting that for him because, again, he's very slow. I'm probably going to be getting most of these in the yellow tree. Deadly Onslaught is an ability, like Foe Seeker and Deadly Onslaught, they're like uh, abilities you'll see on a lot of other lords uh, that have some combat tendencies. Uh, this one's uh, much better for us than Foe Seeker is. Um, I'm going to just go back to it real quick just to show you. Uh, so, 90 second cooldown. 31 seconds, buff of, it buffs yourself, 36% charge bonus, 20% weapon damage, and 20% armor piercing damage. You, ideally, you want to pop this as you're like charging in on a valuable target. What you'll see me do is I'm going to, when I get this, I'll pop this and a lot of his other uh, abilities right before I charge a lord to get, and hopefully I, hopefully I hit him and I can get a big hit in. Um, so, so, yeah. Uh, we might do an extra turn, actually, seems like... Uh, there's, I thought we were going to get further. All right, uh, we are going to continue not upgrading this. Um, this is a thousand upgrade. We are actually going to upgrade our uh, spawning caverns right now because the shields are actually very relevant against the Skaven. They have a lot of small arms fire that uh, they will pepper us with um, as they get better troops. So I am going to use 2000 to upgrade that. And again, you can always cancel something later. I'm going to move. Uh, I'm not going to colonize. I'm going to move just a little bit closer. So I see him now. Lord Skrulk has 10 units. We don't know what's in his garrison. That's kind of the strength of Skaven. You just don't really know much about their settlements until you until you actually like engage the settlements. Um, so let's... Uh, if we were to attack him here, by the way, the garrison would come out. We can kind of move forward and see if he attacks us. I don't think he will, though. Because we're kind of strong. Um, 
let's just check diplomacy real quick if there's anything we really want to do. Maybe... No, there's nothing really we're going to do here. Um, yeah, no, that's basically it. So let's go ahead and hit end turn. We'll go back to Gorok's uh, skill tree. Um, uh, let's see, there it is. And boom. All right. So we did that one. Okay, so there's some blessings you're going to see right here. This is a, on a, 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 some Lizardman Lords. They'll have blessings. A source Lords for Lizardmen will have these. Um, you can only get one. Choosing one locks out the others. Um, you'll see certain skills, excuse me, similar to this. I know the High Elves have something uh, like this. There might be some other factions where it's like you choose a skill and it locks out the rest of the row. Um, the one that we're probably going to go for uh, is going to be this one right here. Gives them plus 10 armor, so it makes them tankier. And upkeep minus 20 for source, 20% uh, for source, infantry, and temple guard units. Um, he already has, uh, if you remember, one of the faction effects is his uh, Saurus already costs less. Let's see if I can find where that is. If that's here. Is that here? Maybe that's not here. No. I'll have to find out where that is. It's a uh, it's like our faction effect, I think. Um, and that will stack. So upkeep minus 20%, and then more upkeep. I can't remember what the exact percentage is. I think it might be another 20%. Um, if we were going down the blue line, you could get that even lower, because there's more upkeep reduction in the blue line just for your army in general. Uh, so that is a... Uh, some people like to do that. There are certain lords or factions or like uh, with particular units that you can essentially get free armies. Um, all right, so we got the uh, technology research, which is not going to do f much for us right now, but, you know, it's a, it's a means to an end, kind of. Um, let's, so it looks like he's coming out to maybe challenge us. We can see Skaven Slaves, Clan Rats, Clan Rat Spears. He probably has some better units in there that we just can't see. He still is within uh, the garrison, but I think we can just deal with this. This unit is not in his army. This is a hero he decided maybe to... Well, it doesn't say he tried any hero actions on us, because you can, like, try to damage one of, one of the units in the army with a hero or anything like that. So this seems like a no-brainer to attack, I would say. Uh, even though we don't know the garrison, um, and we don't know what his good units in the army are, um, I think we can do it, because we got Lord Croak, who just, you know, he's like a big nuke. Um, so let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll do our buildings afterward when we see how much money we have to work with. Alright, so this is going to be a little bit tougher of a fight, as you can see, uh, mostly because of their garrison. Oh no! Oh! So here's what happened. This is why this is going to be a tougher fight. So, the lord that we saw wasn't Lord Skrulk, which I should have noticed. I'm not super uh, great at the game. So... Uh, this is just another lord with another army. His army is pretty bad, but very numerous, so we have to keep that in mind. But very low tier infantry. Lord Skrulk uh, was hidden um, in the settlement we just or or, or nearby. Uh, we did not see him. Uh, he's got some plague monks, which are better infantry. He's, you know, more clan rats than Skaven slaves. So there's some slingers, and he's got a plague claw catapult. That's annoying. That's, that's that's very annoying. And we don't really have a fast unit to deal with it. Maybe we could send the javelins after it. And then he's got the settlement garrison, clan rats, skaven slaves, and uh, night runners, which are more missile infantry. We can click on this to kind of see what the terrain's going to be. It's, you know, it's just kind of a general overview so we can see what we're dealing with. Um, so we don't have any vanguard units, so we can't really think about that. Um... The trees over here, maybe we could use that to our advantage, but I'm pretty sure we are going to deploy before he sees us deploy. Or before we see him deploy. Um, and uh, let's see. Yeah. Our strategy is basically going to be very similar. There's a lot of infantry we have to nuke, so we're probably just going to use Lord Croak a lot to do it. We're going to have to also use Gorok uh, himself to be very tanky. If we lose this fight... Uh, we'll retreat with our losses, right? Um, and then on their turn, they maybe can catch up to us and uh, try to finish us off. Uh, and then Lord Croak and Gorok will be wounded. They're legendary lords, so they can't be killed until you kill the faction, but they'll be wounded. 
Um, so then we'll be defenseless for a while. So let's do this. Another strategy that you could do there is you could retreat um, and uh, see if they follow you. And if they do, like maybe the two armies follow you. And then if they do that, you don't have to worry about the uh, garrison reinforcements because you're further out of the way. I didn't want to chance it, I think. I was just going to just try to do what I can right now. So the troops that we have, there's 1,100, almost 1,200 coming in from the garrison, I think. All right. Yeah, so we do see, actually, he deployed pretty far back over here, and it seems like his reinforcements, he's just going to gather his whole force. That actually is decently good for us. We can't just sit back here and wait for him to come to us. Um, we don't need any more magic, so we'll just hit start deployment. Um, we... Uh, we don't want to sit back here and just let us let him come to us, because that may be something you may want to do, uh, especially as a newer player, be like in a just sit in defensive position and hold, right? And while it is a viable strategy against some armies, he has the artillery. We don't. So he will just, you know, he will likely just set his army up. We have like one missile unit that isn't very good. Um, and he'll just pepper us with missile units and artillery. And if we aren't moving, then we're just going to lose a bunch of models before we ever engage him. So we have to move. Um, I will use the skinks. Uh, sort of like... I'm just going to have them move through the trees. Oh, gosh. My elderly cat is upset. Hello, elderly cat. This will just take a little while. She may meow. Um, you know, she's like... 100 in human years, so. Let's go ahead and put the shields in the front because they can block the projectiles better. I mean, not um, artillery. Uh, I also don't really want to split my line going through the trees. I'm hoping they kind of march up here, um, but they may not. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to keep the spears. Uh, no, we'll put the spears right behind. That's fine. We're just going to do like a column, essentially, just two two units at a time in rows. Um, and, oh, there you go. We're just going to march them like that. Um, and uh, the skinks, we're going to, as I said, we're going to use them kind of like a uh, uh, sneaky unit through the, through the trees. Uh, let's go ahead. Oh, I did not mean to do that. You guys get over here. No, this way. No, this way. All right, there we go. Um, we're going to put Gorok at the very front. We have to utilize his tankiness. We have to have him take a lot of the hits. We're going to put him in the center. And just to have him keep in this formation for the time being, we're going to group all of them. You can either hit this button or do Control-1 to group them in Control-Group-1. And we're going to lock the formation. So when they, as I said, when they move, they're going to move at the slowest speed of everyone in the group. Uh, at the slowest member of the group, they're going to move in formation, stay in formation. Um, and we'll do control group two for them. Um, we're going to have them move up the trees uh, and hopefully stay hidden because maybe they won't have any reason to go into the trees and maybe they can sneak around and get the artillery because I don't know if we're going to be able to do much against the artillery. But let's go ahead and start the fight. And so I can hit control, control group one and move them up here and they're just moving in formation just like that. Um, can see them. Uh, where's it? There we go. Look at them marching. Got Lord Croak hovering above on his little seat. Paliquin? I think that's the name for it. Paliquin? Our army isn't super diverse right now, but it will get much more diverse later. Lizardman armies are one of the more fun uh, armies to look at because they have dinosaurs and stuff like that. So over here, yeah, they're coming in. Looks like they are going to be moving in a wide formation. So they, oh, this is something Skaven can do. They have spawned an enemy unit, like from underneath. They're, it's going to be like just clan rats, so just a basic infantry. It'll tie up this group back here, but we will definitely beat them. Their, their leadership is very bad. This is just sort of like a distraction. Honestly, if you're playing Skaven, don't use the unit like this where you, like, spawn it in the back in a situation where it's going to lose before it even matters, because basically all that I just 
do this, and they will rejoin. They haven't lost anything, and while they may come back, it's, they're not really doing much, right? What you want to use this for is like on missile units or artillery units, because uh, it has such an obscene range. It might even be map wide. Um, so you want to use this on units that they can actually do something to. They're, just, I mean. To be fair, we don't have much that they can do it to, but they should be spawning these in flanking positions after we engaged. Like, they're doing nothing. The, the AI is using this badly, but it's, uh, if you're playing Skaven, don't do this. Uh, let's just continue moving forward. We have to. Uh, Skinks, we're going to start moving forward now since I kind of see where they're going. I don't want to get them in too big of a situation. I'm going to put them on skirmish mode so I don't have to worry about them too much. Uh, since they are going such a wide formation, it's something to keep in mind. We're going to uh, charge in. Now, see how I clicked? And they're just going to run in. Uh, we kind of want to blob. Because if we blob, they blob. And the more they blob... Now, we don't want Lord Croak to attack, so we're going to keep him right here. Um, we are going to now start using our magic, because we should... Uh, we're going to do this middle one, I think, right here. We're going to do a shield over on... Actually, we can hit a lot of people right there. And I held Alt to not have it snap to a unit. If you remember that trick from... Uh, not trick, but that tip from last episode. Um, there are so many Skaven here. It might even slow down my computer. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do another one. This is a smaller version right here. Um, this is also the one we upgraded, so it's going to be more efficient for us to use. Um, and it's still going to do a decent amount of damage. It's not going to, like, do as much as the bigger ones, though. But I might use that more, because that's 6 Winds of Magic, that's 13, and we haven't upgraded this one yet, so it still costs a lot. So let's do another small one, very low cooldown on these abilities. Gorok, we're going to pop his abilities as well, give him some physical resistance. We're gonna, we're, we may as well pop this as well, keep him fighting, you know. Maybe have him charge in on the Lord in the back. Um, Skinks, we're going to move forward, uh, actually we're going to move him around here. Yeah, just around here. That way we can engage the catapults. Um, yeah, no, I actually kind of want Gorok to just get in danger. Because he's just so tanky. And right now, he's chasing off their one of their lords. Um, so that's important. Let's go ahead and move uh, these guys up. These guys, let's uh, move them over here. We Again, the blobbing is kind of good for us right now. Except against the catapult, but it's not that big of a deal. Let's go ahead and put a small little explosion right here. There is Lord Skrulk, something to keep in mind, but you know, it's fine. So yeah, Gorok's kind of engaging a lot of enemies right now by himself, which is perfectly fine. Um, let's continue. Let's see, these guys are kind of in an awkward blob formation, but it's fine. Uh, you can see if there's someone not attacking. So he isn't attacking, but they are, they are. But they, uh, they're probably attacking. Yeah, they're attacking. But little symbols will show up so that show that they're in melee. So if a unit's not in melee, you might be like, oh, what are you guys doing? And we have this unit that's rampaging. Let's go ahead and stop them just, you know, in case we need to uh, control them in some way. Let's go ahead and put them back in the control group. Let's go ahead and, um, no, 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 come this way, come this way. Oh, that's right. They're going to run away because of Vanguard. So I'm, I'm still going to keep them on Vanguard, though. All right, we can maybe get, uh, you know, I think I'm going to do it. Do I want to do it here or do I want to save it? No, I'm going to do it right here. And we're going to go ahead and put this down. Gorok is still doing his thing over here. Let's go ahead and give him some more vigor and some uh, melee resistance. There's a big explosion right there. So it looks like some are starting to shatter, which is nice. The balance power is in our favor. Um, let's go ahead and take control group one minus Gorok. I basically held control and clicked Gorok to basically take him out of the highlighted group. And we're going to move this way. Uh, Lord Croak, we will stop attacking now. While he isn't, like, the worst fighter, you know, it's not something that we really want to do. Let's send him after... We, we just want him to tie up as many units as possible by himself. We also may want him to go after Lord Skrulk, but I don't know where he is. 
Let's go ahead and I think the range is long enough that he can stop them from rampaging. Yeah, let's put him back in the group. Uh, we haven't really been paying attention to the javelins. That's okay, but it's not super ideal. Let's go ahead and send a contingent of the spears off to the side. Uh, oh, some people are fleeing. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah, keep keep going this way. Um, they probably will regroup. But let's go ahead and do an explosion right here. Let's go ahead. Oh, they're starting to all break. So th this is, uh, they realize they're not going to win this. Look at how little damage he's taken. I don't know if there's anyone we can actually successfully run down. They're going to be faster than us. Let's just give some time for these guys. You can fast forward, give some time for them to get eh, maybe another unit or two. All right. That's pretty much all we're going to do. They're pretty much all faster than us. So we'll go ahead and end the battle. Uh, it says we had a Pyrrhic victory, which I guess is kind of true. Um, just that means that uh, or Pyrrhic? Pyrrhic? I don't know. Just means we lost a decent amount. We lost half our army to basically have them lose kind of half of their forces. Um, you can see Lord Crook himself killed 580. Um, that being said, I'm fine with losing some Saurus right now. Uh, it's not the biggest problem. Uh, as long as these two are healthy, they can kind of carry fights. Gorok could have taken on much more um, than he was fighting. Uh, he could be surrounded and do okay. He's just he's just very, very good in those sticky situations. Going for the experience here is generally the better result if you're looking for the long run, right? You know, it's like, I'm going to level up quicker, but we need to go for the replenishment just to get as many units healthy as we can. Um, so we're going to kill and eat them. So... Uh, we got the right of ferocity unlocked because uh, for some reason. Oh, maybe because we have the gold. So he got he defeated Lord Skrulk, which means he's now immune to swamp attrition, which sadly doesn't do much for Gorok because he was already immune to swamp attrition. We went over it in his traits last episode. But he does give public order minus five to the local enemy province, which is it's okay. Honestly, this is uh, the immune to swamp attrition is nice. It's just for Gorok, it's not that nice. So the trait for defeating that legendary lord wasn't very great for us. Oh, I guess I should say, defeating legendary lords, they each have a specific trait. So uh, if one of your lords defeats one of their lords, uh, the, one, uh, if one of your lords defeats a legendary lord, they will get a trait specific to that legendary lord that they defeated. Uh, so it changes depending on who you... Um, who it was that you beat. Some legendary lords uh, have such good traits that sometimes people will hunt them down specifically, <laughs> you know, to get a very good trait. For example, um, uh, one of the ones I can think of off the top of my head is Isabella of the Vampires, Is Isabella von Karstein. Uh, she has a trait that gives regeneration, just a passive healing effect. So any lord that defeats her now gets regeneration. That being said, like for Gorok, he can get regeneration, so that's not, like, super pertinent for him. He can get a lot of stuff. Uh, so, while there... That, that doesn't mean that uh, there aren't traits that are gonna, aren't going to be really good for him. There are going to be some amazing traits for him. Um, I don't have a list or anything. I wasn't really going to prioritize that. But that is something that you could do. Um, another thing you could do after a battle is you, like, could be like, Wow, I have a lot of units still, but they're all damaged. Um, there is uh, a reason to merge units together, right? So you can take these two units, if you shift or control or whatever, uh, and hit merge selected units, and boom, now they're here, um, which is nice. Um, and you could do it even in bigger groups. So you could just all the same unit, shift, highlight all of them, merge them all together, and boom, so you have 75, 75, 75, and then 53. Um, you can't merge these two because they're not the same unit, so we can merge these two, though. I have 69. Um, and I'm not going to merge these two because this is just, just going to make one of them full and one of them weaker, and it's just, may as well just keep them both kind of how they're at. Um, so we have less units, but the fact that they're healthier means that they're going to uh, generally be more effective, especially when it comes to not running away. 
units that have low model count are going to run away more, uh, more likely to run away um, in general. Uh, we did not actually kill the Lord Ian Roxborough, so he is still alive, and he will be regenerating if we don't go after him. Same with Lord Skrulk. You can see they're going to be healing up. Um, and the garrison also will slowly heal up. So we will want to, to push the initiative. That being said, we're probably going to save it for next episode. The thing that I'm going to go for here, I could upgrade this one. The next level gives um, Winds of Magic cost minus two, right? Whereas the, the first level was Winds of Magic cost minus one. Definitely not bad. But minus two on uh, the, this deliverance of uh, Itza, the, um, this is the medium-sized effect. I think it's going to be much better because the Skaven are going to be bunched up at big groups. And this just does so much more to those big bunched up groups. And so I am going to go for this. Uh, other options you could do, you could upgrade his casualty replenishment so your troops heal quicker. It's, you know, it's like upgrade his little passive effect he has on the army. Um, or I could upgrade his shield, uh, giving a cooldown to it. It doesn't really upgrade how much damage it prevents, but the cooldown is pretty significant. Um, but I'm going to go for this because I think it's most pertinent when you're fighting against hordes of Skaven. Um, and let's go ahead and do our buildings. Uh, our settlements. We are not going to upgrade this still. We're going to go for money. Um, I don't know if we're going to go for the second one. Plus 10 growth for a building that we're going to get rid of eventually. 1,180. We're not, we're not going to be recruiting. There's nothing really to save up for. We're not going to do... Oh, there was a Rite of Ferocity that we unlocked. Uh, probably won't be able to do it now. Right? Yeah, this one. Uh, it's 2,000 gold because we spent some gold already. Um, it's not bad, but we're not going to be doing it right now. So, uh, yeah, let's let's build this. And we also have some research available, which is just recruit rank plus two for skink units, which is actually really good. We just won't re be recruiting skinks until we build the building, but we got that down. So let's go ahead and save right here. I decided to create some other save files, uh, call them rollback. Basically, if an episode... Uh, doesn't film properly, I can always reload these. Uh, that'll leave them basically at the end of the previous episode, so I can redo the episode. Um, so I did do that. I guess that's the only type of save scumming I'll be doing, but it won't be because I lose, just be if an episode doesn't record. So let's go ahead and save Itza right here. Oh, and occasionally I might quick save before a fight. That's not because I'm going to reload it, it's just because. Um, it, just having more saves is pretty good. Like, I probably should have quick save for that other fight. Just more saves, the better, you know. It's a copy. The game also auto-saves. Um, every time you hit end turn, it will auto-save. And basically, so you can reload the save right before the turn actually ends. So that's nice. So if you, if you don't save in a while, you can always at least go back to the end of the previous turn. All right, that'll be the end of the episode for today. Uh, next episode, uh, on episode three, we're going to be uh, finishing off what's left of the Skaven here. I don't know if they have... They might have more uh, people back here. I don't know. Uh, it's possible this will be the end of Lord Scroll. He's like our beginner legendary lord enemy. You know, it's like a... It's, it's kind of like what the game has designed us to fight first. If we finish him off right here, right now... That'll be incredibly amazing. It means we can build up this province relatively peacefully, and we can start going um, into um, Oxel. Let's call it Oxel. Um, and there's uh, Oxel is actually a four settlement province, so there is a lot going on here. We'll probably have to fight the Dark Elves next, uh, which are one of my least favorite enemies to fight. Um, but it's it's fine. It's fine. We'll we'll deal with it. Um, all right, but that'll be the end of this episode. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.